we all know that when you have physical access to a machine, that's game over. But how much game over are we talking, actually? Let's find out how completely defenseless Intel chipsets are when faced with USB. <laughs> Here's Maxim Goriaki with Tapping Into the Core. Let's give him a big round of applause. Wow. Okay. My name is Maxim Goriaki. I am a security researcher it's a posit uh, positive technologies company. Unfortunately, my author couldn't be here. His contribution to the work huge, and please consider that we did uh, his work together. So, uh, I would like to cover the topic of hardware Trojan and uh, tell about uh, one of the modern Intel CPU design features that can be used for this purpose. It's Direct Connect Interface. Okay. Uh, as you can see from the slide, we are going uh, to review uh, <coughs> the uh, debugging interface as a basis of uh, such Trojan on the modern Intel CPU. We are going to review uh, Direct Connect Interface. It's a uh, JTAG-like uh, interface and uh, his activation. And uh, then I'm going to talk about several tips uh, that can, uh, can you help to detect such attack. And so, uh, a hardware Trojan is a malicious alternation of hardware that could, under specific, um, specific condition, uh, result in functional changes on the, uh, to the system. It can be inserted at, uh, at the time of manufacture, shipment, uh, and storage or use. You can find information on this type and uh, general technique of detection in the paper mounted, uh, mounted on, this, on this slide. Uh, I think there is no need to emphasize the timelines of this system attack vector. And uh, in the NSA catalog, which recently became available to public, uh, contains information on a, a dedicated device for Dell servers that in, uh, in effect a classic hardware Trojan. And uh, <laughs> Uh, what I've just said logically raises the following question. How much would it cost to implement such uh, a Trojan on modern systems that is cost of the development and uh, embedding such tro uh, Trojans and are those techniques available to people or organizations who are not state security services? All reports will show that unfortunately yes. and. Uh, uh, implementing such Trojan may be possible for anywhere who, who is willing to exploit the possibilities provided JTAG on the modern CPUs. And, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's, it's NSA. Uh, let's step aside a, uh, a bit, a review the JTAG debugging technique a little closer and try to find it Intel CPUs. JTAG standards for joint, uh, for joint test action group, uh, and you can find as detail uh, 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 its description in IAAA uh, with the detail available in the standards itself, how you can see a reference on the slide. There is also a video from a triple C conference available on YouTube where the design is described uh, in close detail. And, uh, but um, sometimes manufacture, uh, uh, but generally, uh, JTAC is good not only as a basis of Trojan. It can also be used for forensic, for example, if you don't trust the BIOS uh, and would like to read firm, uh, firmware manually from SPI flash without a programmer or to detect a rootkit, 
and uh, that that can be um, can also be helpful in research for analyzing uh, undocumented uh, architecture technique, uh, also as boot guard or system management mode. Uh, and it also may simplif uh, simplify debugging of uh, hypervisor and drivers or uh, power consumption or uh, UEFI uh, models and uh, so some way. Uh, often, manufacturers extend the standard attack by adding their own functionalities. Uh, and uh, Intel uh, do it too. Uh, JTAG in uh, Intel processor is described rather poorly. Uh, some information can be found uh, in the documentation I mentioned on the slide. And um, uh, how you can how you can see uh, Intel CPU have three types of uh, interface for JTAG. Uh, it's a direct connection through Intel in target prop extended debug port ITP XDP and uh, Intel it's new technology Intel direct connect interface. It's special transport uh, designed to Enable the close the chases uh, debug through any of USB three ports. You can use JTAG like uh, interface uh, through through USB three. And uh, there are two type of DCI hosting interface in the platform: USB three hosting DCI and uh, BSSB hosting DCI. And um, now. Uh, let's take a closer look at each of them. Intel ATP XDP, it uh, requires the special board and uh, special socket, uh, but uh, it connects directly to the CPU uh, and uh, it, uh, it is cap capability with uh, Intel System Studio. You can do download a tri uh, trial version from the manufacturer websites, and uh, has uh, has uh, protocol protected by NDA, and uh, and <laughs> makes a lot noise and uh, gets hot. <laughs> really, uh, I check it. Uh, Starting with Skylake, Intel uh, introduced uh, Direct Connect Interface technology, and uh, you can find a specific, uh, specific description of it in the doc uh, documentation. The diagram show two type, uh, two types of connection using a special device and uh, and uh, simple USB USB three debug cable. Uh, hey, uh, I would like to note that uh, the target system is not uh, is this case does uh, does not require any software or hardware modif uh, against. Uh, uh, you need only uh, cable or special device. Uh, okay, and uh, this technology. Uh, Unfortunately, is uh, is works uh, out of box uh, only with you you uh, serious chipsets, and uh, let's take closer look at each of connection type. Okay, BSSB hosting DCI. Uh, at its con uh, its connection uh, required special special device. Uh, Intel Silicon View Technology Closer Chases Adapter, also known as SVT SCCA or BSSB, provides access to DFX feature. Uh, and uh, like JTAG and uh, run control through USB 3 ports on Intel, 
Direct Connect interface enabled silicon and platforms. It works through USB through links, but implements a private protocol and makes it possible to manipulate the target system uh, in deep sleep mode. Unfortunately, uh, as of months ago, uh, both XDP and SVT adapters uh, may be uh, able only after signing NDA with Intel. But it's not a problem. <laughs> because we have special special device. <laughs> uh, USB 3 hosting DCI is a common USB uh, uh, 3 debug cable which work uh, as an OTG device. That means that special device appears on the host system and activation. It's really true. It's 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 device. It's it's uh, it's motherboard. And uh, commands are sent uh, to this device through a common USB interface. The device itself is integrated into platform control hub hub and uh, it transforms the command into JTAG. And it's JTAG for PURS. And small demo. So one moment. Uh, we select an, a configuration. Wait for connection to target plat platform. And stopped execution on the old thread. From this device. Current instruction. Special MSR. And I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> One step. Okay. It's work. Okay, then my end. How to activate this magic function? Uh, there are several ways to do that. Through uh, UEFI human interface infrastructure, PCH strap, and special hidden P2SB device. Now let's review each of them in detail. Activation via UEFI human interface infrastructure. UEFI human interface infrastructure is a special uh, interface uh, is a special um, interface that allow creating a user uh, a user form in UEFI as well as processing and manipulating user input. Uh, if we look at how the modern UEFI BIOS is uh, designed, we can find a lot of hidden options that are not available to the user, but process, uh, processed by BIOS. There is, in fact, the uh, basis of our first uh, technique. UEFI uh, human interface infrastructure identifies default values for all options, including the hidden, uh, hidden ones. And uh, as soon as we find the option connected to DCI, it can be activated to set defaults. DCI enable, special hidden option. Uh, and uh, uh, in uh, uh, <coughs> UEFI uh, in defines uh, 
uh, default value, fall option, and uh, we find the option connected with, with DCI. It can be activated to set defaults. Then resetting the BIOS to default using standard uh, interface. And uh, we obtain a working DCI. It's easy. Uh, the edited image is uh, programmed into SPI Flash by a programmer or through the standard BIOS uh, firmware tool, if you have privileges. Uh, and uh, you can, um, those settings can be edited by a special AMI BIOS configuration problem, uh, pro program uh, on, the, on the slide, is it? It's it's free. You you can you can download from IME website. And uh, uh, but uh, if uh, Budgard is running uh, this uh, this technique uh, don't work because uh, the system will not boot uh, since this tool change changes the UEFI model. Uh, but you can activation via PCH trap. Uh, this uh, DCI, uh, DCI can uh, can also be activated by configuration specific bit on the PCH configuration, either manually. Uh, they are located in flash descriptor region, or by using flash flash image image tool. It is is special tool for. Uh, for <coughs> create uh, uh, firmware uh, BIOS. Uh, this technique works even if WoodGuard is activated. It's good. And, and finally, you can try to activate it directly through P2SB device. You can find a special index uh, and register in documents for different PC generation. Uh, right, it's six generation and uh, left from seven generation. And uh, uh, use those uh, those data for deactivation on the fly if BIOS has not blocked DCI setting changes. Okay, right. Uh, we know some motherboard where it's work. And uh, the leads uh, to the question, how can we protect ourselves from such Trojans? We propose activating boot guard in order to make the modification descriptive uh, in, uh, in the first. Uh, and uh, then you can check the DCI enable bit and debugging disabling register through uh, special debug interface MSR. In, uh, in this case, uh, DCA may be enabled, but execution con cannot be stopped. Uh, and uh, as a result, it's impossible to get access to memory and register. And you can uh, s see documentation. The least significant bit uh, this register makes it possible to restrict CPU debugging. So we need to set to zero and lock the register itself, recording uh, bit one into a uh, special field. And, uh, and uh, can you help to protect your you platform, your laptops, and new age of the USB? You can... Uh, find or uh, make special device which um, uh, which uh, re uh, re uh, transmits commands from USB or Wi-Fi and use it to uh, implement a backdoor in servers uh, in laptop or uh, servers or another uh, Another motherboards or computer, and 
Modern the CPUs allows using debugging tools which the help to uh, USB 3 available to numerous platforms. These tools make it possible to control a system totally, making the technology attractive not only for debugging and research, but also for deploying hardware Trojan. And please check your Skylake laptops. And thank you for your attention. And uh, maybe we um, we publish special tool on our uh, on GitHub of our company, uh, which can help you <coughs> to check your motherboard. Thank you for for your attention. Spasiba, Maxim. So, questions. Do we have any, any questions for Maxim about JTAG over USB? I see one already here in the front. Thanks for a great talk. Um, two questions. First of all, um, could you share which motherboards uh, allow enabling such debugging features? We know only one vendors because, uh, but we, uh, we don't um, search in other vendors and we, we don't know uh, how much it, this vendors, uh, uh, why um, available to use this function, uh, functionality. Second question, um, is it possible to send debugging data not via USB, but via network itself? Why not? You have management engine processor. <laughs> Scary, thanks. <laughs> okay, we have a question from the internet. Hello, okay. Um, the internet wants to know if you have uh, tried reverse engineering the um, protocol the USB box uses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, uh, next series. Okay. Uh, here in the front. So have you conducted Intel and if yes, what they said? Yes, they uh, don't said anything. <laughs> In the back by the camera. So the, the, the debugging features can be disabled by the BIOS, right? Uh, Sorry, what? The debugging uh, features can be disabled depending on your vendor by the BIOS, right? Uh, DCI? Unfortunately, sometimes no, because um, uh, you can... Um, uh, because config uh, Configuration of uh, DCI uh, ena uh, enable uh, is enabling uh, to PCH trap, and if uh, in PCH trap uh, on uh, platform hub uh, is activated, BIOS uh, can't uh, disable it. And if you uh, if you have uh, DCI, you always uh, enable. Uh, uh, any features, uh, because you can uh, start, uh, you can stop on the reset vector. Sorry. Okay, so, uh, so any idea how widespread this is? Uh, the question was, do you have any idea how widespread this problem is? I, I don't know. Maybe uh, I, uh, I think that um, uh, Intel. Uh, implemented special uh, special technique which uh, connection with cryptography uh, but don't uh, don't use it use it now and uh, I, I think that uh, maybe in next generation he activated it we have another question from the internet yep. the internet wants to know if it's possible to use this to um do something to uh, bypass uh, some kind of signature check, check or something. So if you can like modify what's being executed, basically. No, because PCH trap is not signaturing. 
and uh, you can uh, rewrite it uh, for um, uh, for <coughs> for BIOS and uh, boot guard on another technology don't don't see uh, don't see it. Okay. Is there a follow-up question from the internet? Uh, yeah, there's a different question. That is, um, uh, people want to know <coughs> if and where they can get your slides and read more about your research. Sorry, repeat uh, question. They, they want to know if and where they can get the slides and read more about your research. In my email. I <laughs> <laughs> okay, write me. I, I ask about... <laughs> I tell about it. Okay, in the back. Yeah, thanks for the talk. Um, did you do any research on platforms prior to Skylake? Let's say Haswell or something like that? Haswell, uh, Haswell, um, Haswell uh, has the uh, same technique, but unfortunately uh, DCI is uh, hardware technique. Uh, in Haswell, it's software technique, and sometimes, uh, and uh, I, uh, I didn't see um, special special f firmware which can uh, use this uh, technique, uh, this uh, JTAG like interface. Uh, it's te it's technology SVT adapter works from Haswell. But uh, only after uh, signing NDA. So Haswell doesn't work with a simple USB device. No, no, no. Uh, only Skylake. Only Skylake. Thanks. Okay. In the EFF shirt. Uh, are you familiar with uh, antivirus products that also use the Intel debug states, like Checkpoint, Sandblast, for example? And how is this similar, or does it interfere with, with the hardware? <laughs> It's difficult because it's very um, non-stable works. So, so does does that technique interfere? Like, would, would the checkpoint sandblast detect this, or uh, the checkpoint? Uh, uh, it's may, maybe because um, this technique have some troubles. For example, uh, uh, they uh, it it use. Uh, hardware register uh, and uh, you can read um, address, uh, addresses and uh, you can read uh, modify uh, of memory which uh, uh, doing this uh, SVT or USB uh, JTAG like uh, device. Uh, and uh, it's it's detect for malicious uh, ma ma uh, for virus and uh, maybe you can use it, but no, no, not good sometimes. Okay, okay, we have time for about three more. Did you have a follow up? No. Okay, then in the front. Is it is it uh, tracing uh, capabilities in, uh, um, possible to well? Is it possible to trace code and maybe read memory <laughs> yes. while the core yes. is in is SMM mode? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so you can just can read the, all the SMM procedures and you can uh, uh, take uh, the uh, vectors. Uh, yeah. you, uh, can you, you can you actually can you use this technique to write SMM vectors? You and can uh, you can uh, use hardware breakpoint. For special register on the re on the right, insert this breakpoint and uh, don't um, able to lock to locks uh, the memory, which uh, uh, which use uh, to system management mode, for example, and read read it. We doing we doing it. Yeah. Okay, in the back right. So, um, the protocol, as you said, is uh, protected under NDA. Are you aware of any like open uh, research on this topic? Yes, it's open research. Okay. Another thing, if you is it like following the normal uh, USB protocol, or do you really need some special electric properties? For SVT special adapter, uh, it's property protocol which um, using uh, the signal of USB 3, but it's, it's not USB 3. And uh, this cable, it's a uh, simple USB 3 protocol, 
And uh, yes, you can write program which, uh, for example, uh, can trace your target target system. Yeah. Okay, and last one in the back. So, um, is it like JTAG compatible in such a way that it has a scan chain and stuff, or is this some Intel invention, this DCI protocol? DCI, uh, I know, uh, I think that DCI is a special device which uh, retranslated uh, the commands from USB uh, to JTAG chain, JTAG types. Yeah, right? So it's like uh, toggling the JTAG signals? Yeah, yeah, th yes. So that's what happens. Wow. And is there any chance to put this support into open OCD or such <laughs> open source software? Or maybe in the future. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Let's put our hands together for Maxim one more time.